Okay, welcome to part uh, two of this tutorial series. In this video, we're going to be looking at how to get the namespaced uh, elements from the um, RSS document using the simple XML class. So if we just look at the raw RSS feed, these are the elements that we want to be able to get access to. Um, they didn't show up, uh, if you remember, in part one where I sort of printed out everything that we got uh, by default. They didn't show up in that um, array or that information. Uh, I pointed that out at the time, I think. Um, so we need a way to be able to get these. And the way you do that is you actually have to know uh, this URL up here. So this is, I think, this is basically specific to each feed. Um, although, I guess they will use like a standard system. I don't really know that much about. I don't use RSS feeds that often. Um, all I know is how to process them. Um, so if we just look at the um, sort of elements. Media here is the namespace and up here in the RSS tag you have XML NS which is sort of where the namespace is defined and this URL is I don't know, it's that. <laughs> and you need that to be able to get these namespaced elements. So say if you wanted to get this one here, the atom link, whatever that is, you would need to know this URL because that corresponds to the atom namespace. So let's just quickly copy that URL like so, and let's go back to our code. Um, the way to get the um, namespaced element is using the children, um, the children method of the item object. There's a problem with anything object oriented; it, it just gets confusing in terms of terminology. So anyway, um, the way we're going to get the sort of media namespaced elements uh, is using the well, I just said using the children sort of function. So children, I could be spelled children, right? Children, and then you just pass in that URL, like so. And what that will do is get those two elements, media, thumbnail, thumbnail, the other thumbnail. Uh, obviously, we need to store this result, so we're going to create a new variable called media, and this will be equal to that. So then we can use this to, um, well, let's just add a print underscore r media, lowercase r. And let's just quickly comment out this because we don't want to print out so much information that it's impossible to sort of see. So reloading the page now, we'll see the results of that children method call. And you can see that we have a thumbnail, which is good because we wanted the thumbnail. In fact, we have two thumbnails. Um, and you also you'll see notice that they don't have any content. They, it looks wrong. They're basically it looks like it's we've done something wrong, but that's not actually true. Uh, so the reason that we see nothing in here is because if we just look at our documents again, the thumbnail ob uh, thumbnail element which I've just highlighted doesn't actually have any content. It doesn't have a closing tag. Uh, all it has is attributes. So it has the width, height, and URL and the URL is really what we're interested in but we can just get them all because it's sort of easier so if we just go back to our code and instead of printing out media um, just straight away just media what we're going to do is print out media thumbnail uh, which will be the array of thumbnails and we're just going to be using the first one so we'll just take zero to make it the first one and then we'll use the attributes method on that. So reloading the page now, you'll see something slightly different, hopefully. There you go. You can see we have the width, height, and URL. And this corresponds to the small thumbnail because it was the first one. The large one is element one. Um, and we can use this to uh, process, well, we can use this well, that's it. We've done it. We've got the image, <laughs> basically. This is the first thumbnail tag. So if we look at our XML document again, the one that I just highlighted corresponds to this here. Uh, and if you just look at the URL, it should be the same. I'm not going to do that because it takes forever to compare all those numbers. Um, so that's it. Done. That's the only hard part really. So now we can just use that to... Um, well, we can just put that into our array and return it. So going back to our code, let's do that. Um, what we need, to, what we can do actually, is loop over all of these attributes and put them into an array, and then return that. 
and that gets around having to work with the awkward oops where's it gone here that gets around having to work with the awkward attributes thingy so going back to our code once more what we can do is add a for each loop here for each as key points to value and we're using it using this because the attributes if you just look at this once more have sort of work in sort of key and value pairs so width would be the key and 66 would be the value URL would be the key and this horrible URL would be the this URL would be the value so that's why we're using key and value pairs and we're doing a loop just because you know there are more than one so we need to loop over them so going back to our code let's just add what we're going to do is create a new array called image and this is going to be um, well it's an array so what we need to do is set the key key equal to the value value like so um, because we're putting the key and value pairs from the attributes array into this sort of new array and also the value needs to be cast to a string for the same reason as I explained previously or well, demonstrated previously with these other ones so then we can just you add this image array to um, our list of information that we're returning so we'll just call it image and we'll just add image like so and also this needs to be defined up here so let's just add image equals array so now uh, let's uncomment this print and reload our page once more and you should see that we'll have all of the information we need yep we do Woo. so we have the title description link date image and the image is itself an array which contains the information on the image so you have the width the height and the URL and the URL is what we're basically going to be using so let's you let's now um, well, now that we've formatted this information into a sort of easier to work with array format, we can use it to create the page that we demonstrated originally. So if we go to our uh, code again and open up the news page, oh, sorry, <laughs> one last thing. Uh, instead of printing out the article information, we need to return it. And now that we've completed the function, let's just add a quick comment to see, tell people that look at the code what it does. So fetches. Um, articles um, hang on <laughs> articles from the BBC news RSS feed so going back now we've done that we can go to our news.php file and we can um, well we need first thing we need to do is remove these pre tags because we're not using pre formatted text anymore we're going to be creating our own output sort of HTML style output so because this now returns an array we can just add a for each loop so we can do for each and this will be sort of this will return an array of articles so we'll do for each that as article hang on article there we go and then in here we can use the article informa the information in the article variable to create the html so what we're going to have is a h3 tag with the um title of the article in and it's going to be a link so we'll add an a tag as well href equals something and we'll close that there and then under that we're going to have the image which is going to be um, you know like the small thumbnail and then under that we're going to have the description in there so now we can use the we can use PHP to fill in all these little gaps that are left so we can do PHP PHP echo article uh, link here because that's the URL they want to click on and sort of go to the full story and then inside the a tag you need another PHP block with echo in it um, and then in there we're going to output the article title whoops oh dear <laughs> save as ignore that um, so that's that line done and here we just need the image source uh, which if you remember was in the image key cool image URL because it was the the image key was itself an array and the URL was the 
URL. You can also add the width and height here, but I'm not going to do that because I'm lazy. And down here, we just need the description, which is sort of the well, the text. So we can do um, echo article description. Like so. And if we reload our page for hopefully the final time, we'll see if that has worked. It still takes a bit of time to load. And there we go, except the images haven't shown up, which is a bit strange. And also there's PHP tags. Okay, let's see what I've done. <laughs> so going back to our code, or our code here. Um, well, I've got that there. Oh, I spelled article wrong. Good. There we go. So reload, which will please be the final time. <laughs> Hopefully that tag will have gone. There we go. So now we have the title. And if you look at my bottom of my browser window, they link to somewhere. I'm not actually sure. I think that's the right link, but I'm not going to click on it because it doesn't really matter. The principle is there. Um, we have the images, which is the most important thing. And obviously that is working. And we have the description. So that's basically it. Hopefully you've sort of understood it. I've kind of fluffed a bit with the terminology, but um, it's just sort of awkward. Um, essentially, the principle of namespaces, I think, was the point of this video. Um, but anyway, hopefully I've covered that enough, and if you have any problems, feel free to ask, but the best place to do that is on the forum. By the way, um, just saying that because I've been getting quite a few messages saying, help me, it's broken. Um, and I don't always see them or have time to reply to them. So ask on the forum if you have any problems. There's a link in the description and on my channel and everywhere. Okay, so thanks for watching and hopefully this was fairly useful and you managed to understand it. <laughs>